Cairo, Seattle. This is COVID-19 Seattle. I'm Dave Ross. And I'm Aaron Granillo. Today, Governor Jay Inslee officially extends his stay-home order to May 31st. His four-phase plan to reopen the states begins tomorrow, but he says it'll be at least three weeks between each phase. Republican State Senator Mark Schessler says he is not happy with that plan. I would say my email is really close to 100 percent of the public wants the door opened up more than Governor Inslee. Some completely, some significantly more, but they all want to go farther than the governor. And here are some of the restrictions that are being lifted starting tomorrow. Again, 100 state parks open for day use only because camping is still restricted under phase one. Going to the golf courses is now allowed also starting tomorrow. Uh, But I did hear this morning on the morning news, uh, it looks like it's going to be tough to find a tea time. And then also, Dave, it looks like recreational fishing finally is going to reopen again tomorrow, too. Yeah, so a lot of people should be a little happier than they were last week. Uh, The tea times were immediately booked up, so I I found that to be uh, very reassuring that the uh, demand is still out there. And if this succeeds for three weeks, right, we then move to phase two, which would mean that all outdoor recreation involving fewer than five people outside your household. So that involves camping, going to the beach, et cetera. That would be OK. Uh, gathering with no more than five people outside your household per week is OK. Limited non-essential travel within proximity of your home is OK. Manufacturing reopens. New construction is OK. Uh, nannies can come back. House cleaners can come back. You can go back to retail shopping in the store, but I imagine there are going to be capacity restrictions because other states are doing that, sometimes 50% of capacity, sometimes down to 25% of capacity. Real estate transactions resume, uh, professional services, so that would mean, what, you can see the lawyer again, presumably you could get dental care again, Uh, hair and nail salons reopen, house cleaning's okay, and restaurants that less than 50% capacity with no more than five people at a table. Right. And then we move on to phase three. And essentially what that means is uh, just bigger group gatherings are allowed, it sounds like. Sports activities of between five and 50 people would be allowed. Uh, Recreational facilities at less than 50% capacity. That's uh, public pools, things of that nature. And then uh, allowing gatherings with no more than 50 people uh, under the phase three. And then also travel. So resuming non-essential travel uh, would be allowed under phase three. As for restaurants, they could operate under 75 percent capacity with table sizes of no larger than 10. Uh, Bars could be back open under phase three with that uh, less than 25 percent capacity. And a few other things opening as well. So uh, indoor gyms and movie theaters, those could be open at uh, less than 50 percent capacity. Uh, All other businesses pretty much not already listed would also be open, uh, excluding nightclubs and bigger gatherings or more than 50 people. And that is essentially what what phase four would be, it sounds like, Dave. Right. I don't see schools mentioned, though. That's true. Yeah, that is true under these phases. Uh, Maybe the governor has not made a decision on that yet. I'm not not sure yet. Yeah. So if we follow this and this is three weeks per phase, Mm -hmm. that means three months possibly before everything is completely back to normal. Yeah, I I saw it was Oregon's governor too. I mean, she said that their state's stay home order runs through, I think it was July 6th, which is essentially what the governor is saying here. Uh, Even though he's saying my stay home order is extended until May 31st. Yeah, if you do the math, you're not going to be into phase three until July, if that's the case, it seems like. And and that's the best case scenario, right? Because we're going to be looking at the figures uh, during each of these phases and see if if anything starts getting out of control. I've noticed, though, that um, nationwide, we seem to have plateaued. I mean, mm-hmm. we're getting a steady stream of new cases. In Washington state, it looks like the case count is dropping, but it is not. As I recall, the original modeling, uh, the downward slope that I'm seeing now is a lot more gradual than I was seeing before. I, I'm seeing a much longer, a much longer tail, and and that mm-hmm. may be what we have to what we have to live with. I mean the 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 one piece of good news is if you look at the um, University of Washington modeling mm-hmm. of available hospital facilities, there is plenty of space. So if there is another outbreak, we're ready for that. But of course, no one would like no one wants to see that happen. 
Internal documents from the Trump administration came out this morning that project a rise in coronavirus cases. The New York Times obtained projections from the CDC and FEMA, which forecast nearly double the number of daily deaths by June 1st, up to 3,000 deaths per day. This modeling suggests the plans to lift restrictions too soon in many states could put us right back where we were in March. So we've had a stay-home order in Washington state now for six weeks. And again, as we've been mentioning, uh, it, it, it seems like the, the number of cases or at least are, are tailing at around 200 new cases uh, a day or so. Uh, but other states, I, I mean, you know, they're, they're lifting restrictions substantially sooner uh, than we are. So time will tell what, uh, what their caseloads will look like here in the coming months. Right. Well, what's changed, though, is that we seem to have more testing available. We seem to have more protective equipment available. And I think we know what to expect and what the, the risks are of reopening too soon. Some of the fastest growing cases in terms of infection seem to be those rural areas that up to now have been spared. But those meat packing plants apparently were uh, certainly incubators for the virus. Uh, nursing homes continue to be a problem. So uh, it looks like local officials are going to have the responsibility of saying when it has gone too far and what additional measures uh, have to be imposed. What was significant about these these new numbers is that the president has apparently adopted them. Mm -hmm. Uh, In some of his comments, he is now warning us that we're talking about a death toll closer to 100,000, which he had backed away from earlier. But now he's talking about that again. And uh, I mean... We know how eager the president is, like all of us, actually, to reopen the the country, but him in particular, because he's got a, you know, he's got a, an election to win here mm-hmm. from his point of view. And um, if he seems to be preparing us for that uh, higher death count, it means he must believe that could happen. All right. Speaking of the president, too, I know you saw this. He said there will be a vaccine for the coronavirus by the end of this year. That's the first I've, I've heard of this. Uh, Every other public health official in the country and around the world has been saying 12 to 18 months. Does anybody actually believe the president that there will be a vaccine by the end of 2020? Well, I put that question to Dr. Gordon Cohen, who's our regular medical consultant, and uh, he says this whole process is being accelerated. So there is a little bit of a risk here, but here's what it boils down to. The vaccines have been developed. There are a bunch of different ones out there, in fact. So you'll have competing vaccines. They are being tested right now for safety. In other words, they're being tested on volunteers to see if there are any negative effects, right? Because the last thing you want is for a vaccine to make a healthy person sick. It's not supposed to work that way. So those tests are going to run their course because nobody wants to risk putting out there a vaccine which may make you sicker. What they are apparently going to skip are the tests to ensure it's actually effective. Mm. So some of the risk is going to be that you would get the vaccine and it might not protect you, um, which may be a special problem with this particular virus, because we're also learning based on another study into uh, genetics that your own personal DNA print may determine how susceptible you are to the virus. So there's a a lot of uh, different moving pieces, as they say. What reassured me about what Dr. Cohen told me is that they're not going to scrimp on safety, at least. All right. Mm -hmm. So if you're offered a a vaccine, you feel you need to take it, at least it won't hurt you. But be advised that it might not provide as much protection as, as we were hoping for. There could be a a false sense of security then if there's a vaccine being promoted that we don't actually know if it's effective or not. Right. And I I just hope that's made clear to people. And I'm sure that will be, I mean, you don't want to fool around with that kind of thing, right? So Mm -hmm. for people who are particularly vulnerable, they may want to take the risk of getting a less than 100% effective vaccine because that's better than nothing. Uh, For people who don't feel under particular threat, it might be worthwhile to wait longer until the tests of the vaccine's effectiveness have been conducted and have come to a conclusion. We will be back tomorrow and every day after with a 10-minute rundown of the daily local news. You can subscribe to this podcast. You can also find our news coverage on MyNorthwest.com or listen live at 97.3 FM.